what is this? Is this hair? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Arcade and I'm back with another tutorial and in this one I'll show you how to make progressive house step by step, start to finish, from nothing at all to a nice progressive house drop. So this is a great tutorial for beginners and intermediate users, but mainly for beginners because I'm gonna go over everything you need to know to make this track and I'm gonna explain everything in detail. Also this video is brought to you by Melodix. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them later in the video. But for now, let's get started with the track and let's get started with the drums. So just to clarify in this how to make progressive house tutorial, we're gonna sort of make this new progressive house, what people call progressive house these days, which is sort of like electro house or big room house, sort of a mix of all of them. Some of the tracks like Kashmir makes or Martin Garrix makes. So that is the type of progressive house we are going to make today, as you could hear in the preview. So yeah, let's get to it. So first I'm gonna start with the drums. For that I'm gonna use the playlist. So first I wanna choose a kick and I like to use Kashmir's sample packs. I know not everybody has them, but they are actually really affordable. You can just go on Splice and get them. So I would definitely recommend everyone to get this one. Any of the Kashmir's pack work great. They are great for beginners and advanced users as well. So I'm gonna use a punchy kick from this pack. I like this one, so let's use it. Actually, let's drag it straight into playlist and set the BPM to 128, which is the classic progressive house BPM. And as you can see, the kick is right on the line, on the grid, so you don't need to adjust that. So we can just hold control, select it, and control B to duplicate it. Let's repeat it like four times. And we can preview it now. Just a loud kick. Let's lower the volume of it. And what I like to use in Progressive House is some drop clubs and rides along with the kick. So let's get to that. So let's get back to the sample pack and go to Symbols, Rides. And we can preview some of them. Let's go to Kashmir Volume 3 and check the rides there. Yeah, I like this one. It's sort of like white noisy a little bit as well. So that's gonna help fill out the drop later. So let's just make it shorter and go closer, hold the Alt key so you can move around and not snap to the grid, but make sure it is actually at the end of the grid. So we can uh, just duplicate it easily and it doesn't get off beat. Because if it was like off grid like this and you duplicate it, it will be off beat and won't sound good at all. So yeah, make sure it ends on the grid. That way you can duplicate it easily and it will always stay in the rhythm. So yeah, let's just duplicate it throughout the whole thing, this loop, and let's make it lower in the volume. Okay, now we are getting somewhere with the drum beat. I also wanna add some drop clubs. So in this pack, you have this loop but you could really use any clap. What you can do is put some reverb on it so it's longer. But yeah, you could just use regular claps as well, like so. You know, just take a clap, repeat it. But here is this little loop. We can lower the volume as well. So yeah, that's the drum beat for now. Uh, one thing we can do to have this ride sort of end properly because now it's cut off pretty much and the next one comes in. We can keep it that way, but what I like to do is double click it, choose smooth bleeding and then hold control and hover over your track. That way you select all the items in the track, all the sounds and then hold the alt key and let's move it back a little bit. So we have this proper end to the ride. It's a bit shorter now, but it nicely fades out. And maybe we can make it a little bit longer. Like so. So yeah, that's our drum beat for now. We can also add a clap now. So I'm gonna use this dirty clap and a pre-shifted clap. I always like to use pre-shifted claps. They just sort of make everything more squishy or whatever. And it sounds good. So yeah, pre-shifted means that there is a slight delay between when the club actually hits and there's this reverse club before it, sort of. So yeah, when it's pre-shifted, make sure you hold the Alt key and 
set it up right. We can also preview it with the kick. It sounds about right. Now I'm holding shift and duplicating it. So yeah, I'm gonna duplicate it all the way through and this club as well. Let's see. Oh yeah. Let's make this one quieter. And yeah, sounds about right. Let's maybe make the drop clubs louder and the right a little bit quieter. And yeah, this is our drum loop ready to go. So yeah, it's sort of a lot and it will create a lot of noise in the drop, which is a good thing sometimes, but we don't have to use this whole thing at once. One more trick I like to use is, uh, let's duplicate one of the rights by holding shift and dragging it and then click on the icon on the right, make it unique and reverse it. Now let's just sort of adjust it. And every fourth bar, we're just gonna have this reverse right in here. Like that. To make it more interesting. So yeah, this is our full drum loop. Let's just duplicate the whole thing. In the actual drop, we can actually just have the kick at the beginning. And then we slowly gonna add up the other sounds. So we're gonna see how it goes, but basically you don't have to use the whole loop in the drop. You can just have the kick or you can just have the kick and the rise or just like the claps. So yeah, it's gonna be based on how we mix it all together. And then we're gonna decide what drums we actually want in there. So yeah. So now that we have the drums ready, we can actually move on to the melodies. Now let's talk a little bit about our sponsor today, which is Melodix. And I'm really glad they sponsored this video because I think this is a helpful app for every producer out there. So Melodix is an app which can teach you how to play the piano, but not only that, it can help you make better melodies and improve in music theory. And the best thing about it is you can try it out for free and it's perfect even for complete beginners. So you get your courses here, lessons, exercises, and I was checking out these courses on building chords, which will teach you how to play the chords on your piano, but it will also help any producer understand how chords work. So you can use your keyboard or you can use your computer keyboard. I'm gonna show you an example of this lesson using my keyboard, which it recognized right away. Let's check out this course. So yeah, basically you follow the notes in the app and once you play them right, you pass the lesson and you can move on to the next one. So the lessons start off really easy and then they get progressively harder. So yeah, check it out, try it out for free, link below in the description. And if you do get the subscription, it starts as low as 12.50 a month. Now let's get back to the video. Let's get started with the composition and I'm gonna use a piano sound. So I'm using Nexus and I know a lot of beginners don't have this plugin, but I would use flex as an alternative, which is right here, which is in, which is an FL studio plugin and it's a great one. So if you don't have Nexus, just use flex. But if you do have Nexus, I definitely recommend it. A lot of great sounds in there as well, but we are not really going to talk about making the sounds. So the plugin doesn't really matter. You can choose your own sounds, but I'm gonna make sure in the next video, I'm gonna do FL Studio plugins only. But in this one, I will stay with the plugins that I use and that I'm used to using. So right now I'm just gonna have any piano. It can be any sound and I'm just gonna use it to create this composition. So the way I do it, you start with the bass notes usually. And you can also use the helpers, scale highlighting, automatic that will actually show you the key of your song and which notes you can use while making this melody so let's test it out so right now i'm just gonna lay out some bass notes
So essentially you have to imagine the chord progression or the melody in your head before even making this. So I'm hearing the piano notes, but in my head I can already hear the chords and how they will sound in the actual song. This comes with experience, but if you do this enough, you will also be able to hear this. And I'm gonna do like this thing at the end. Just for fun. And as you can see, we laid out these bass notes and it shows that the key is E minor. It shows it in the left corner of your FL Studio. And now it shows which notes we can use to add the melodies or chords. So I don't like to use the helpers. They are not always reliable, but they can help beginners. So now that I have the bass notes, I'm gonna add the chords. So the way I do it is pretty simple. So this is the C note. Let's put another C note octave up. Or literally we can just hold control, select the keys and hold shift and add them octave up. So this is C and it will be a C chord. And the way you create the chords is you put in the first note, which is C, you skip three notes and you put in the fourth note, then you skip two notes and you put in the third note. And this is a C major chord. If you wanna make it minor, you just put the middle note one down. And that's essentially how I create chords. You can sometimes change it up and move some notes randomly. But this is the basic chord and it always follows the same pattern where you skip three and then two. So let's just do that for all the chords. And sometimes you can try the minor chord or major chord and it doesn't work. Just switch it to the other type of chord. Always just switch the middle note and you will be good. Okay, now I'm gonna select all the middle notes by holding Ctrl and Shift at the same time and selecting it with my mouse. And then I'm gonna press Ctrl and arrow up to put them octave up. This is still the same chord, but the notes are in different order, but that's still the same chord essentially. And I don't really like this chord right here. So I'm gonna try to, so I'm gonna try to adjust it. So yeah, I just moved this middle note down and I don't really know the proper music theory explanation, but I like the way this chord sounds now rather than how it sounded before. So I'm gonna keep it that way. And as you can see, it shows E minor as our key. So now all the notes that are sort of grayed out with the lighter color are the notes that we can use and stay in the key of E minor. So if you've gone this far, now you can make the melody and just follow the grayed out notes in any order. So let's try it out. Uh, let's create a melody. I already have one in my head, so let's do it. And while you're making this, imagine this in your full track with all the sounds and stuff like that. I know it's just a piano, but you can just sort of imagine it playing like on a festival. Let's put it octave up. Let's actually put everything octave down. Hold control, arrow down. Okay, that's our melody from the beginning. And as you can hear, always when making melody, it has to have some sort of a conclusion. When you start off saying something and at the end, 
you like finish it off with the conclusion. So this is the beginning of the melody. And this is the conclusion. And then it can repeat seamlessly. When making melody, make sure the end notes, the notes with which the melody is ending, fit well with the notes with which the melody is beginning. Because that's the transition and that has to be on point. So always check that if your melody ends and begins seamlessly, sort of. And yeah, now we can duplicate the whole thing by holding control, selecting with the mouse, hold shift, duplicate it. And let's change the second repetition of the melody to make it more interesting. And yeah, here's where I'm gonna go off the grid that is recommended to me. And as a beginner, you don't need to do that, but I already had this melody planned out and I sort of like how it sounds when it's not in the right key, I guess. It still sounds good, it's just a different scale and I really like that effect that it has on the melody. So sometimes you can go off the recommended grid by FL Studio and that's why I'm gonna turn off the helpers for now. I prefer to work without them, but if you are just starting out, it helps a lot. And as you can see, I didn't change that much in the second repetition. I just put some of the notes higher and then it goes back to the same conclusion as it did before. So yeah, that's our melody right here. Let's preview it. So yeah, sounds nice enough. If you want to learn more about making melodies and compositions, check out Melodics, the sponsor of today's video. But now let's actually get to the fun part, which is selecting the sounds. Actually making the melodies is the fun part as well. Choosing the sounds and hearing how it sounds all together is fun as well. So yeah, let's get to that. Now we have the composition ready. It's going to be easier. So yeah, obviously we are not going to just put in the piano and have that as a song. Although, no, let's start with selecting some sounds. And in Progressive House, oftentimes, you can use the same sounds over and over. It's like rock music. In rock, you have the drums, you have the guitar, you have the bass guitar. In Progressive House, you have the gritty bass, you have the bass, you have some hyperso chords and the leads. There is nothing wrong with using the same sounds, but having different melodies or different variations of the sounds. But essentially, you always want to have similar bass for the song. Let's start by putting Nexus in here. And yes, I'm going to use Nexus again. And I'm going to go to Kashmir Spec, go to Bass, and I'm going to use this Secret Bass. So that's the greedy bass I'm going to use. You could use any other, really. I'm going to give you an example. Go to Serum, go to Bass, do Fast Bass. You can use that as well. Kashmir actually recommended that one time. So yeah, you can use any sound, just make sure it has similar qualities as this greedy bass. But it doesn't have to be this exact sound. The next sound I'm gonna use is this one from EDM5, is this sub bass. Maybe lower the cutoff. Yeah, and one more sound, I'm gonna use Serum for this one, is in leads. You don't need any sample pack, it's in the default sample pack and it's this hyperso. So yeah, these are the three sounds we're gonna use as the base of the song, and then we're gonna have the leads. Now go back to your composition and select your bass notes, which are the lowest notes, and I'm just gonna select the first note of each, because I don't actually want this rhythm. So just select the first note whenever it changes, and Control C, create new pattern for your bass, and Control V, put it octave higher. And now we can actually make this bass pattern. Let's just make them longer. And actually, before we get to that, let me put sign chaining on this. Sign chaining means every time the kick hits, the volume of the bass or any sound is lowered. So as you can see, I put the bass sound on the track five just by clicking the track button. And now it's in the mixer. 
and I'm gonna use the low filter, through the low filter, and I have a tutorial for this type of side chaining. So if you wanna check it out, link will be in the description. And I'm just gonna use my preset called Classic Smooth, a little bit smoother here. And let's hear it. Yeah, excellent. So now, as you can hear, there is this ducking, and that will be every time this kick hits, there is this dip in the volume. So let's make this pattern. I'm just gonna make these notes longer at first. Select them all, hold Control Q, so they sort of snap to the grid. And let's uh, sometimes change the octave here and make this stuttery effect. Just to make it more interesting, you know? And let me just remove this and duplicate the same pattern over here. And here's our bass. I'm actually gonna do some bends in the bass right now. So the way we do that is we go to Nexus and we need to set this up right here, modulation, and make sure the range max is 12 and minimum is 12, minus 12 as well. And if you have any other plugin, it will be there somewhere. And then set this range to 12 your FL Studio range, and we're gonna automate the pitch. So, let me just select, hold control, select on your timeline, go back to Nexus and right click on the pitch, create automation clip, and copy this value with which you begin, just by hovering over the first point, right click, copy value, just so we have it, because that's the correct pitch of the sound. And now let's try to make some bends here. So I'm right clicking here and just doing this sort of thing. Uh, I think it should be like this. So every time at the end, make sure to paste the value so it ends on the correct pitch. Otherwise it ends on weird pitch and then the whole bass will be off. Example here. See, that's not the correct pitch, so let's make sure to paste the value at the end. And we can just hear the bend right here. So yeah, nice little bend. And we can do so again. Right here, maybe the opposite way. And then paste the pitch again. <laughs> so yeah, just play around with it. Maybe over here we do like a low one. Yeah, and then just copy it over. So yeah, let's hear how it sounds right now with the bends and the bass. I suppose we can do one here as well, like so. Okay, that is our gritty bass with some bends that will make it a bit more interesting. Now let's add the sub bass. We're just gonna click on the gritty bass, hold Ctrl C, create new pattern, click on the sub bass, hold Ctrl V. And since this one sort of has a click, I'm gonna make sure it plays like this. So yeah, since it has this decay on it, you wanna make sure it repeats itself again and again so it's more pronounced in the mix. So yeah, I'm just uh, shortening the notes and then holding Control B 
to copy them. So now we have the regular bass and the greedy bass. And one thing I'm gonna do to the greedy bass is remove the high frequencies from it. It's on track number five. Let's put it on track number seven. Go to your mixer, greedy bass, and this is the side chain. So this track will only be used for side chaining. It has a low filter on it. So go to your greedy bass, click on it, and right click under the side chain track and choose root to this track only. And then do the same for the sub bass, which is number six, root to this track only. So we're rooting these tracks to the side chain track so they will be affected by the sign chaining plugin on this track. So you don't have to put it on each one, you can just root them to this one. Let's put some effects on the greedy bass. I like to use sound editor just a little bit to make it more compressed. And then parametric EQ2, right click on your first point, choose type, high pass, lower this until it's four dots. It's never supposed to be more than four dots. And then just move it so we delete all the sub frequencies, which are these ones. We don't want them because we have the sub frequencies for the other bass, which is the sub bass. And we can maybe even make the higher frequencies a little bit higher. And now the sub bass is playing the sub frequencies by itself. So yeah, let's preview it with the sub bass. Okay, let's lower the kick a little bit. So now the next thing we're gonna add is the hyper so leads and we're gonna go back to our composition that we created and let's copy the chords, the whole thing pretty much, except the melody. And now create a new pattern, go to our serum where we have the hyper so and paste it in here. And make these longer by holding the alt key and just extending them. And of course we wanna select those short notes here and make them short again. And we wanna put the whole thing octave up by holding control arrow up. And we also wanna make sure it's sign chained as well. So let's put it on a free track and root it to the sign chain track. Let's play it now. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Let's lower the volume a little bit. And one thing I like to do is use Stereo Shaper on these. So select Stereo Shaper, preset Stereoize 2, and then EQ and remove the low frequencies as well. So the low frequencies, we really want them just for the sub bass and the kicks and stuff like that, but we don't need them for the leads or the greedy bass. Otherwise they would just clutter the mix and it wouldn't be useful. So to make sure all the frequencies are affected, put the stereo shaper below the EQ. And let's actually also use some reverb, just a little bit of reverb to make the hyper so chords a bit more spacious. Let's put them in the playlist and let's hear how they sound with the drums and everything else. Okay, so I'm gonna lower these claps right now because <clears throat> um, they are too loud just by listening to it at the moment. And really, I'm just gonna delete all of this because I'm sure that this is how I want it. So first, we're just gonna have the kick, then the kick and the rides, and then in the second repetition of the drop, we're gonna have everything. But yeah, so far sounds pretty good has a lot of drive, and that's those basic sounds, gritty bass, the sub bass, and the hyper so chords. You can use any other sounds, but just make sure they have similar qualities as these sounds. So you have the chords, and the bass notes, and the drums. So yeah. Now what we are missing is the melody. We already have the composition, so now it's all about finding the right sounds. Let's create a new pattern. I'm gonna use Nexus again. I already selected some of the sounds beforehand, so the tutorial is easier to make. So the sound I'm going to use is from Kashmir's pack. It's gonna be a lead called Neverland Main. Let's lower the volume and remove the delay. And let's take our melody from the composition we made at the beginning and just 
paste it in the lead. And make it octave lower. And again, I'm gonna extend these notes. But also, I'm gonna sidechain the leads as well. So sometimes you don't wanna sidechain some of the plugs, but leads are usually good when they are sidechained. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna root it to the sidechain track. I like this effect, so yeah. So because of the sign chaining, it sort of creates this offbeat effect, even though it's not really offbeat, but uh, I like how it sounds, it's sort of groovy. So yeah, that's the first layer of the leads, we're gonna have much more of them, stack the layers. So once we have that, let's preview it. So yeah, sounds pretty good already, but we're gonna have to do some mixing, which is pretty hard in Progressive House, but we're gonna try. But first, let's actually add more leads. So this one is more powerful. So let's stack the layers, essentially. We're gonna add more layers of the same melody, but different sounds, and it will make this whole lead more powerful. So let's clone it. I'm gonna use this pluck. and increase the cutoff, so it's sort of like dirty. Let's add another layer from Serum, and I'm gonna use this talk box. So when adding the layers, you hear the sound, right? And you think, what frequencies is it missing? So I feel like it's missing some of the mid frequencies, because it's already like a high pitched sound and it has a lot of power in the higher frequency. So that's why I'm gonna add some more layers that are more powerful in the mid frequency. So for example, this one, right? So let's just copy it. And maybe put it lower. Oh, that's too low. And make this layer way lower. Even more and actually put it on the channel line. So yeah, that sort of fills out some of the frequencies there. Maybe we... Yeah, we can put it octave higher. And one thing I like to do is take three times oscillator and create this white noise. So we're just gonna choose random for all of these and then go to envelope settings, enable the envelope, lower everything pretty much, and just move the decay slightly. So we, you have this click. And we're gonna use the same melody for the click as for the leads, and it's just gonna add this plucky start to the lead. You can hear it, right? So we're gonna make it even less obvious. and let's sidechain it as well. So yeah. Now let's hear how it sounds with the new layers and in the song. Sounds pretty good so far. Uh, I'm gonna do some mixing, but first I'm gonna add one more sound or two more sounds. Let's see. So let's just add an exhaust, which is sort of like white noise. Uh, I'm gonna go to effects, white noise, exhaust. And just add this one or, and also sign chain the exhaust. Like so. So yeah, that's good so far. And one more thing I wanna add, some sort of a vocal, which will make this more interesting and more original. So I'm gonna go to vocals. I'm gonna go to vocals, vocal shouts, long ones. And I'm gonna take this one. 
let's create a new pattern and it's just a regular vocal vocal shot it's in the key of d and i'm gonna sort of crossfade it here and then change the length so it sort of repeats seamlessly something like that and let's put it on a new track and sidechain it as well so root it to the track number five and then let's put reverb on it and lower the dryness so it's sort of in the background and one thing i'm gonna do is click on miscellaneous choose the key as d because that's what it is that's what it says in here in the name and just put it in the track but you have to hit the right key for a track and I think that's B minor right there. So we can barely hear it now. So let's make it louder. So right now a lot is happening in the song and there's just too many sounds. So now is the time to do some mixing, which is always a pain when it comes to progressive house. But let's do it. So what I'm going to do is go to master channel and put wave candy in here, change the presets to peak meter. And now we can see all the decibels of all the sounds. So start with the kick. Let's do minus five. The right, maybe a little bit lower. I like to go lower and then if it doesn't sound good in the mix, I put it back higher. Okay, the claps are okay. These claps, maybe a little bit lower. And now the bass. Okay, it's pretty loud. Maybe we pull it back just a little bit. Now the sub bass. Sounds pretty good. The hyper so chords. Okay, they sound pretty good, but I think we can lower some of the frequencies in here so we have some more space for the melody. We will see. Now the melody is a bit tricky. So let me go to the melody. Let's delete all the low frequencies right off the bat. Let's also put stereo shaper on it. So the melody is sort of like wider in the mix, stereo, not in the middle of the mix. So it's more spacious, maybe some reverb, but just a little bit because it already has some reverb from the sounds. And I'm gonna use the transient processor and this sort of helps either to make it more plucky so the attack is uh, louder or make it longer so the release is louder. You can hear it immediately. So let's just sort of make both a little bit more obvious but lower the volume of them because they are too loud. Here they are fine. So that's good and let's hear the vocal. So I wanna go to the vocal and put EQ on it and make it like super high frequency-ish. And delete the low frequencies. Okay, sounds good, let's preview it. Okay, I feel like the leads can be still more plucky. And maybe play with the bass sounds. Let's hear it now. Yeah, now the leads pierce through a little bit better. And yeah, at this point, it's just about testing it out, repeating the song, hearing what was right, was wrong, and always take a day off and check it out the next day 
because you will definitely get the ear fatigue or whatever it's called if you listen to it constantly. And for me, especially for progressive house, this happens all the time. But yeah, this is essentially it. One more thing I'm gonna add is this fill at the end of the first repetition of the drop. So we're gonna remove the kick here and remove all the sounds actually. And go to the melody, take the last part of the melody. That's a good way to do it with the melody. And I'm gonna find like a vocal like this one and we can put the melody in here but make sure to set the root note to the correct one which is G and make it go lower and increase the out so so it's shorter and I'm gonna put it on the same track as the leads actually let's put it on a separate one and root it to the one where the leads are. But I wanna make this way higher. Because it's sort of like weak. So let's put sound reducer on it as well. And I'm gonna use a little trick where I layer it with a percussion to make it more obvious. Like so, so take a percussion, duplicate the vocal melody, the rhythm is important here, and just have it play the same rhythm but with a percussion, make sure you stay on one note and it's C5, so the percussion is in the correct key. Yeah, sounds pretty nice, but I also wanna layer it with a snare as well. Yeah, sounds pretty good there. And one more thing we need is the Prida snare, which is in the big snares. And we just put it at the end of this beat right here. And yeah, let's do the same in the second one. And I think our drop is ready. So let's have a listen to what we created. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learn something new because that's the whole point of these videos is to teach you how to do stuff it's supposed to be a proper tutorial, so I explain everything in detail. Let's hear our finished result. Enjoy. And there you have it, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something new. And again, thank you to Melodix for sponsoring this video. Definitely check them out to learn the piano and improve your composition making skills, I guess. And so yeah, that's the song I made with a little bit more time because I did a lot of mixing, a lot more than I did in this video. But yeah guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.